Okay. Hey there, everybody. Okay. So I am back. I apologize for last week. Um, I was, I, I took a little time away and I um, was in a, a place, one of the last few places I imagine in this uh, country that didn't have great cell service or Wi-Fi service. So I could not um, get on to have our training last week. So anyway, I apologize. Welcome, welcome back. Um, if you are joining me live, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a heart, say hello, let me know that you're here. Um, this one's a cool one today. I'm excited about our, our uh, topic of today, documenting your journey. So we'll dive into that. Um, and then if you have any questions along the way, definitely make sure to pop them in. And then if you, I'll answer them at hopefully them coming through over here on my phone. And um, if you are watching in replay, let me know that you are watching in replay too. So first thing I want to share when it comes to uh, talking about documenting your journey is that um, the big thing is that for many of us who start our businesses, what we don't realize is that we are unwittingly uh, stepping into the role of chief marketing officer long before maybe we even get a chance to uh, develop the skills. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. I'm so excited that you're here, Karen. It's so great to see you. Um, and I'm sorry I missed you last week. I, I did totally miss you. <laughs> so um, so anyway, um, so you're, you unwittingly become chief marketing officer. And so, and for many of us, uh, a lot of the aspects of marketing, um, we're not necessarily up to date on or familiar with. So we have, a, a, we could kind of have a steep learning curve a little bit. I actually was in a Facebook group today where someone was asking about, um, she was sending out postcards to real estate offices and, um, one of the people in the group gave some really great advice was that those things really don't work anymore um, unless there is a bigger strategy behind it um, that typically isn't the best way to begin to um, do our work. You know, so if we want to share our gifts with the world, we have to begin to get comfortable with some of the new ways of marketing. So today we're going to talk about one of the mindset shifts that we can make that can make that um, just easier on us because there's a lot of pressure. Sometimes it feels around creating content and creating social media posts. Um, but so we've got to embrace this marketing. And when I say embracing the marketing, I, I don't necessarily mean that embracing means that you're going to be comfortable. So you may still feel uncomfortable around your marketing for a while. And for me, it was years literally years, you know, we, we don't want to seem like we're pushy or salesy or cheesy or wasting people's time. Um, all of those things. I, I have thought those things over the years. Um, you might feel like maybe you're an introvert and that's, you know, that keeps you kind of quiet and behind the scenes. Well, I'm here to tell you, I believe it or not, am actually an introvert. Like I always, jo I've been joking forever that um, COVID and <laughs> quarantine, like that's my jam. I've been like self quarantining myself for years. I'm a super social person. I'm out, but I love, I love, um, and I'm so content in my own world, really. So, um, so even introverts out there putting out marketing messages and social media and blogs and blogs and all that. So let's, we'll talk about that today. Um, you know, so I think part of the problem is that we, um, you know, when we think about creating content, like creating content, it feels heavy, right? It feels stressful. We don't know what to say. We don't know when to post. Are we supposed to be using keywords? Are we supposed to be using calls to action? Like there's so many things that can come to mind. Is again, is this a waste of time? I, I, um, I used to say this to myself all the time. It, who wants to know about this? Probably no one. Um, actually, in reality, is a lot of people do. <laughs> um, so, and and when you think about the the videos and the things that you consume, it's amazing. You can find the most esoteric things um, that people have created a video around or a blog about. So, um, people are voracious for information, um, but because it feels heavy, the idea of having to create content, have it to, having to create it consistently, um, it, it can feel overwhelming, it can feel very stressful. But if we make a little mindset shift and we kind of look at what the influencers do on social media, or I mean, it's really, 
it's a shift that they've made. And actually, I have a feeling they've templated on like the Kardashians or the Real Housewives. They've taken that model off of television and kind of brought it over into the online space. And it's actually brilliant. And I mean, seriously, the Kardashians literally had me binge watching them for hours on a flight a couple of years ago from here to um, France. <laughs> and I was like, I cannot believe I just binge watched the Kardashians, but I got so into just the documentation of their journey. And of course I know like it's manufactured, but we can do the same thing. Um, I recently heard a podcast where Jenna Kutcher talks about this. And if you don't follow, follow Jenna Kutcher, she's wonderful. I would definitely follow her on Instagram. Like that's her jam. And she was talking about how, when she shifted to talking more about her personal journey, her life, sharing images of herself, her, her business exploded. And one of the things that many of us have a tendency to do is to hide behind, um, hide behind the camera, hide behind the pretty images of rooms and things like that. And we never get ourselves in front of the camera and we're doing a disservice to ourselves. So, um, so we want to, we want to be mindful of that as we move forward. So, and it's funny that she had said this because in early in my business, one of the things that I had thought about doing was sharing, um, my business, my business chronicles. I think I called it to myself. Um, I have lots of videos on my camera roll and in my Google folder file folder of the business chronicles from early in my business. I wanted to share things like what was really fun about the day, what really, just was horrible about the day. Um, what are the lessons I learned, the mistakes I made, the frustrations I had, the things I had to deal with that I wasn't expecting to deal with. And I filmed a bunch of them and didn't really have a place to put them because when I was thinking about it, we had YouTube. And a lot of the videos over on YouTube seemed really like super perfect and super done. And so they sat on my camera roll and, and the result was I, I didn't have any kind of presence online for quite a while. Um, so the, and the truth is I still struggle with this. You know, I still struggle with the discomfort. It's not that it, it it's so much easier. Um, but I've just learned that it's a part of the process for me, hopefully for you, it's not. Um, but anyway, but we have so many tools now where it's so much easier to be able to document our journey, just like the influencers do. And it can be as mundane as a screenshot of your computer screen, something you're working on, a trip to home goods, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, crazy, um, you know, and, and amazing. It can be something as simple as that, the way you pull pillows together, the way you make a bed. So, um, and you have tools like stories on Instagram and Facebook, you have Facebook live, you have IGTV, you have blogs and blogs and TikTok. Um, there's so many great places where you can begin to document your journey. And if you think about your, um, your social media posting and marketing as kind of like a, a diary of the behind the scenes of your business, it becomes a lot easier and even more fun sometimes to just share what's going on. And some people worry that if they share what's going on in their business, that maybe somebody will take those ideas and take those strategies and then not need to work with you. And trust me on this. If somebody does that, that's fine. There will be people that do that, but there are going to be plenty of people that follow along with you, follow your journey, learn your tips, tricks, and hacks, and behind the scenes things that you do and they will still hire you. I have so many realtors that um, they'll tell me, oh, I, I told this client that they should use agreeable gray because I know that's one of your colors, but yet I'm still there to help with all of the finishing touches. So even though they, I've given them my favorite neutral paint color guide and they know exactly what that is, a lot of times they'll say, well, I wasn't sure if agreeable gray was the right color. Is it supposed to be Manchester tan or something like that? So you will have people that take your things and, and kind of roll with them themselves, but then you'll have plenty of people that will still continue to, you know, want to hire you. So by documenting your journey, what you're really doing is you're giving people the beginnings of building that know, like, and trust factor. You're getting to share your expertise. You're getting to share your philosophy. You're getting to share your thought process on things. And by doing that, people begin to naturally feel more comfortable with you and it's going to move them along a path, right? We want to always be moving our, our, um, 
you know, our audience along a path. And the big thing is we want to really ultimately get our social media um, and online friends onto our email list to create them, uh, you know, in our own community that we own so that if Facebook and Instagram go away tomorrow, which is very unlikely, but if it does, or they change some way about something about their algorithm, you're still able to get in front of people. So documenting your journey is a really wonderful way to do this. The cool thing is too, that now with um, tools like rev.com, you can send them a video clip and they will transcribe it. And you could have a blog created very quickly based on a video that you have created for Instagram or Facebook. You can repurpose the content. You can have it transcribed. And perfection is no longer the standard. I was watching Emily Henderson the other day on um, Instagram at GTV. And she is literally, you can tell it is like iPhone shot. It's not anything fancy. It's not incredible. And she's showing you several ways to style um, a bedside table. She shows you several ways that she makes a bed. So those are things that we can do um, on our own. And again, hers are not overly produced. So you don't have to worry about the perfection thing at all. You know, if you, uh, you know, I know some people will go on completely baseball cap, you know, workout clothes and all of that. Like I'm not that comfortable, but if you are, that's great too. You know, you just want to be, and you want to be in front of the camera. Um, because again, Jenna Kutcher talks about the fact that that's when really things started to explode was her on there. So anyway, so let's, let's start off really with the basics really quick before we get into the three ways that you can kind of the, some of the three strategies you can use. Um, first of all, you want to make sure that your social media posts are up to date and that they are, um, that you have all of the information in there. You have links to your website. You have an email address. Make sure that your business profile on each of your social media accounts is really thoroughly done. You want to have a little, you know, description about what you do, maybe where you're located, right? Because if our services are geographically based, if you're not yet doing East Asian consultations, you know, um, which I think you totally should. <laughs> Um, but if you're not doing that, um, you want to make sure that you have your location so people know where you're located and how to find you. Um, the other thing that you want to do, which most people don't realize, is on your social media profiles, you don't want your logo. You want your face. People don't want to interact with a logo. They want to inter interact with a person. So that was something that um, I only just changed like probably two years ago. So you definitely want to make sure your social media post is your face and not your logo. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about the types of content that you can create. You, first of all, you, just you talking to the camera. One of the things that I did that got so much interaction was I was going to, there's a, a big antique fair in um, New England that happens a few times a year. And so I just documented that journey, like literally me waiting for my friend on the porch with my to-go cup of coffee. And I was like, I'm so excited. I'm going to Brimfield. I'm going to share, you know, what I'm finding there, what the buyers from all of the, you know, the shelter magazines are looking at and what Martha Stewart's team was buying, you know, and I just did that. That got so much interaction. And it was something I'd never done before because I felt kind of weird. I thought, oh, like, who am I to be doing? this, but it was amazing. The interaction that I got actually had, um, a realtor reach out to me after that to say, I love the pillows you got. I cannot wait to hire you for a vacant because I posted, I just bought these for our inventory. She said, I can't hire, wait to hire you for a vacant. And sure enough, a few weeks later, we were doing a vacant, um, house for her. So you can do, so you want you in front of the camera, tutorials, things that you have learned, how to, like I said, mix and match patterns, how to make a bed, um, how to choose a paint color, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's something you've learned about fabrics. If you know, um, for example, um, one of my students is putting together a course for people who rent for Airbnb. And so she was talking about how they need to think about the fabrics to buy or that you shouldn't purchase upholstered headboards because they're dirty and they're breeding grounds for just dirt and yuck and grossness. So um, you can share things like that in a tutorial. Tours of your projects. One of the things that we like to do is go, um, go live and tour a project that we're in, a vacant that we've worked on. Um, so you can do tours of projects. You don't need to do them live. You can, you can post a video, create a video that you share later. Um, but those are always good ones. Scenes from your day. 
Yesterday, I was in the house with all kinds of vintage wallpaper, and I snapped a bunch of pictures of all of like the shag rug and the wallpaper and the pink sinks and all of that, which we're, we'll put together and we'll put in our Instagram stories about kind of scenes from the day. So those are great things to do. What would you do? Sometimes you have a question. What would you do? Or um, what do you think of this? You know, one of the things we had was a little while ago, we had a realtor who did not care for the wishbone chairs that we had used, the style of dining chairs that we had used um, in her project. So I thought, huh, I wonder if that may, maybe that's not a style that people are gravitating to. So I put it out on our social media and I said, you know, yay or nay, thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell me what you think about these chairs. And of course, I found out that most people really love them. So the next time that a resistance like that comes up from somebody I can say, well, actually, I've done a poll out on my social media and like people love these chairs. They're just, you haven't seen them yet or used them yet. So you can do that to kind of get people's vibe. I've had help people help me choose paint colors on um, my Instagram stories. I'm, I've got a couple of swatches and I'm between a couple. And then I say, well, what do you think? Or which carpet sample or which style sample do you think? So you can begin to bring people in and ask them questions and have them engage with you. Um, you can do is, is it me or like, and you can share something that was weird, or quirky, you know, like we've been in listings where lighting is in really weird places or, um, or, you know, like, you're like, what was the builder thinking? Is it me? Or like, where would a TV go in this room? Like, what's your best guess, you know, or something like that. So you can begin to get people involved in the kind of the background, share a favorite hack. Maybe there's a tool that you use. Maybe there's a way that you do something. Maybe you hang art in a way that's like super easy, super streamlined. And you just want to share that. Um, I know in the Facebook groups, we have people who share, you know, like, um, how do they get out wrinkles really quickly in bedding? You can share that with anybody, whether they're selling or dwelling, right? So there are all kinds of things we can do. So let's talk about a little bit about like some real concrete examples here. <clears throat> and hey to everybody who's popping, it's good to see you. Hey, uh, uh, Maria and David and um, Lynn Blue, who, hi. <laughs> um, I'm sending you all hearts. <laughs> um, let's see, okay. So Instagram stories, let's start with Instagram stories. Instagram stories are so fun and easy to do. And like I said yesterday, hey D, it's so good to see you. Um, so Instagram stories are really, really fun to do and very easy. So like I was saying to you earlier, I um, yesterday in my travels, I was in a house that was like really a time capsule to the fifties. And so I snapped a bunch of pictures of the finishes and the, the just the fun things that were kind of in this time capsule, the shag rug and all of that, that we'll put together and we'll just share in scenes from the day. Um, you can share listings that you're working in, some of your favorite things that you found in them, whether it is, you know, the beautiful natural light or the pretty front door or the gorgeous lighting. Um, you can start sharing those. Maybe you want to um, share, maybe you want to talk about your favorite neutral paint colors and you want to begin to get people onto your email list. So one of the strategies that you can do for that is create a poll or a question. So maybe you share an image of a room and you say, you know, it was, this room came out beautiful after we painted it, you know, agreeable gray by Sherwin Williams. Um, what's your biggest paint struggle? People will answer you. And when they answer you, you can reach back out to them and you can say, you know, I have, uh, you know, a neutral paint color guide where I share all of my favorites. Would you like it? I'm happy to email it to you. And then you've got an exchange of an email address that takes them from Instagram and brings them over to your email list. So something like that is a lead magnet. So if you haven't been following along, a lead magnet is something that you can use, a tool, a you know, beautiful guide or how to, and um, share that in the um, profitable staging um, business starter kit, which we'll post in the uh, comments above that you can you can download that talk walks you through how what a free lead magnet is and how to do that and, and what to create. But it, having a free lead magnet allows you to begin to take that conversation off of Instagram stories in this case and bring you bring them over to an email list where you can continue to engage with them on a regular basis and continue to share all of your beautiful repurposed content that you're sharing with everybody. 
so that's one really concrete way that you can do that. And that's super ninja. Um, I learned that strategy from, um, oh gosh, Jasmine Starr. So if you don't follow Jasmine Starr of the show, social curator, she's great. And she has lots of tools to help you plan out your content and all of that. But that's one of her strategies. And we've used that before. And it's a really good one. IGTV. Again, I talked about Emily Henderson. IGTV is another great way that you can share how to style a bed. So here's one way that I've seen this done really brilliantly. Again, to take somebody over from IGTV to your email list is you show how to style, one way to style a bed. And then you say, if you want my three other ways to style a bed, um, DM me and I will, um, I will make sure we get you that information. And then you could have another couple of, you know, another video where you have the other ways that you style a bed. Um, that totally got my attention. I thought it was really amazing. So um, again, we wanna be thinking strategically about how to get them over to your email list. Um, you can also share your thoughts on new trends on Instagram TV. You can share something you think people should know about you or your process or your philosophy. Again, just posi positioning yourself as the expert, getting, letting people see who you are and who your personality is. But at the same time, documenting your process, your day, your journey, your path. Um, you can share even you know, frustrations, things you wish people knew. So you could share, you know, one day we had a post where I literally was like, oh, Okay, I have um, now come to this investor's house three times to begin the staging process, and we have a toilet sitting in the middle of the living room. And I just kind of talked about it, and I thought, you know, I don't care if he's <laughs> he's even watching this. I actually hope he is to see how frustrating this is. So this, you know, like you can share stuff like that. Um, so that's IGTV. Facebook lives. So Facebook lives, and it's the killer, right? Live. You've got to be here live. Um, you can also upload a, a pre-done video, but Facebook kind of prioritizes the lives, gets those in front of more people. So that's why we want to go live. Now I've shared this hack before for those of you who are on and have heard it, you know, a million times, I apologize. But one way you can start to practice this is create your own Facebook group private Facebook group where you can begin to practice getting comfortable going live. Um, but I have to tell you that for um, doing that for years and then only being live in my groups where I have my courses and my students, um, this year I made the commitment that I would come out here on Rethink and be live out here where I have a whole lot more people who will see this and, um, and you know, watch. And so I'm a lot more vulnerable. And if I make a mistake, um, but I have to say that in just doing it and kind of committing to knowing that it's going to be uncomfortable and knowing that I might make a mistake, like literally the other day, I said to my son, one of our trainings, I said, I, I got on live and I thought I had something like on my nose. And I, the entire time I was so stressed that everybody could see what was on my nose. I don't even know what it was. And it was glare or if it was like actually like food. I don't know. Um, but I was like, oh, well, I got through it. And nobody said, hey, wipe your nose. So <laughs> um, but anyway, so Facebook lives, again, I talked about this, you can shoot from being on site at a project, maybe you're just if you're only doing a consultation, and you, you know, you're not going to share the inside, because you obviously you want permission from um, a house that's occupied for sure. Um, but maybe you share from the outside, the great neighborhood, the community, if it's close, you know, I was in a really cute neighborhood the other day. And I was like, look at how cute this neighborhood is. And I just walked around the corner and showed a shot of the the street. So like you can totally do that. You can shout out the realtor that you're working with or the investor or the builder um, and, you know, begin to and tag them in your comments or tag them in your caption so that you're then engaging them. So you're building a relationship and rapport there. Um, you can do a walkthrough of your inventory. If you have a warehouse or you have a storage space and you have inventory, you can take people through that and, and some of how you organize it or how you start the process of pulling inventory for a vacant. And again, you can use your inventory to share how you um, pull together a scheme. Maybe you take a piece of art and you say, okay, if I have this piece of art, this is how I'm going to wear it and throw pillows, a throw, you know, an area rug. This is what I'm thinking about. So those are all things you can do. One day we were in organizing our inventory and we had images of our team literally doing silly, the silly things that we do when we're in there dancing. Somebody had a lampshade on their head, you know, it got crazy. And in the morning or something in our storage space, <laughs> our storage warehouse space. So Anyway, so you can do that again. You want to 
you want to make sure that you're using it wisely. So again, if you're partnering with a realtor or an investor or a builder, make sure that you shout them out. If you're using a resource, you know, maybe you use a furniture rental company for what you do, shout them out. You know, it's the whole philosophy of givers gain. Um, be sharing that. And then of course you want to be sharing a call to action. If you want to, you know, if you'd love to partner with this crazy crew, you know, email me. Um, check out our website on this page. So all kinds of ways that you can do that. And again, I know I talked about a lead magnet earlier, but a call to action simply could be reach out to me, email me, go to my website, check this out. Here's a, here's a blog about that. And you can put a link so it, you don't actually have to create a lead magnet. There are so many other ways that you can um, begin to engage people in that conversation. Maybe it's DM me if you want more information and you take it over into the DMs. I had, um, I was, I created a course online during COVID and that's exactly how I reach out to people is all in DMs. And I just shared the link to the course. Maybe some of you who are on here actually learned it that way. So, um, but documenting your journey, having a call to action and staying consistent. And if you can just think about, you're just creating a diary of your days and your work, it will become so much easier. And then again, you'll have all of this content that you've created that you can then repurpose in other ways. So those are some really good ways to begin to document your journey um, and differentiation through kind of sharing the destination. What's the end result of what you do um, with all of your expertise and all of your knowledge, okay? So that's what I've got for you. I don't see any questions came. Oh, hey, Missouri, how are you? Um, so anyway, if you have any questions at all, post them down below for me. I'm happy to answer them for you. Um, and if you want that um, profitable staging starter kit, um, profitable staging business starter kit, we'll be putting that into the uh, caption above this video. You can go grab it there. And um, I will see you next week for some more uh, training. Next week, we're going to be talking about sticky situations and slippery slopes. Some of the things that can come up when you've got clients who maybe want to um, choose what you put into a house or they're not happy with what you did. How can you handle those sticky situations and slippery slopes? Maybe you, didn't, you started out not charging enough and you've got a realtor or an investor who now is expecting super low prices and you've moved beyond that. So anyway, uh, have a great week, everybody. I will talk with you soon. Bye.